Hey guys, how you doing? This is Coach Aaron. Um, I just want to go over some Grand Prix action, some Grand Prix attack for white, but I only want to kind of do the first 10 moves. Um, especially for beginners, I think the first 10 moves are really the most important to get you going. And the Grand Prix attack's got a pretty, uh, pretty much a mapped out configuration for the start. So, um... I'm going to go through one or two or maybe even three of the games I played recently, just fast Blitz games. But it's not so much the results of the game themselves. After all, anything can happen in Blitz sometimes. Um, it can get messy quickly when you're playing fast. Um, but it's just the first ten moves, the actual opening Grand Prix attack that I want to talk about. All right, so here's the first one. Good old E4, C5. They're playing Sicilian. I play Knight C3. I'm trying to keep it closed. If I was going to play an early D4... Knight of three, first of d4, I would try to open it up. That's the open Sicilian, but I'm playing knight c3. I'm playing a closed Sicilian, not trying to trade pawns, and I'm trying to keep control of d5. All right, so let's get back to the next move. And here, black has quite a few uh, different moves. In this particular game, they play g6 against me, which is very common. Once they realize their c5 pawn is not going to be traded, their dark squared bishop sometimes has problems coming out through the center and becomes a dragon bishop, as I like to call it, or just fianchetto. Um, all right, so Grand Prix attack. It usually means you're going to create a pawn duo. You're not going to use your d pawn because you don't want to open up the center and allow a trade. So you can use your f pawn. You got your pawn duo, your snowplow. And you're going to build that uh, up, and um, once you're ready, then you're going to go forward with these two pawns at some point. All right, so that's the, the beginnings of the Grand Prix. Let's keep going. Bishop g7. And as soon as I move an f pawn, as I've said many times, I want to get a knight to cover the windiness and weakness, right? So I move my f pawn, unless there's another pressing move, I'm going to play that knight as soon as I can to cover some of that windiness uh, towards my king. All right, so here, black has quite a few good choices uh, again. Um, and here in this game, though, he played e6, which I actually don't think is a great choice. Because I'm, below, I'm uh, making a snowplow, I have this pawn duo, you know that either one can go forward at the right time. So if you're going to put all your pawns so early on one color, and here they're putting them all in the white squares, it means that you're allowing your opponent to dominate the opposite color and here this would be a very easy idea i already have because they just played e6 i have an easy e5 followed by knight e4 and between the pawn and a knight i would have early early grip on two squares perhaps d6 and f6 why would you play an early e6 and allow what we call dark square weaknesses even with this bishop here it's already busy this dragon bishop the fianchetto bishop is busy trying to kind of cover these dark squares and suddenly you're going to create even more so that does not make a lot of sense to me so this actually even though it is played a lot in these type of pawn configurations these types of positions a lot of people play in early e6 doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, the moves which are a little more common would be, let's say, knight c6. And then I would attack that knight right away. I want to get rid of my bishop so I can castle. And I really love trading for this knight and doubling the pawns. So if they played, let's see, d6, that's much more common. This actually covers the square, so it's much harder for me to go forward with my snow pile, at least properly. Um, they can play e6 a little bit later if they need to. And this already lets the bishop out. So d6 is probably played the most against me, um, and then knight c6. So one of those two are the main moves, but I do see uh, a lot of a6 here. This is actually a very early move by black to say, hey, I'm going to fight you on the queen side very quickly. Going to take away some of your squares, b5 here, right? And I let your bishop come out so comfortably. Um, this is a way of playing knight c6 and not letting them mess up the pawn structure, right? Boom, and then boom. Um, so a6 has been played a lot against me too. I usually try to play a4, covering b5, and making it so at least my bishop can go to c4. I don't want my bishop going this way, because I would like these dark squares, this diagonal, to be available for my queen later. That is a lot of arrows. Let's remove some of them. <laughs> All right. So if they play e6, I would probably just play a4. But here my opponent played e6. And notice this pawn is not protected right now. This bishop went this way to g7. So right now it's kind of a hanging pawn. Um, nothing's actually protecting it. Uh, it might even be a target. So again, 
doesn't make a lot of sense here. So I play bishop c4, I want a castle, and I'm controlling um, d5 as I like to do often. And maybe one more thing here. Maybe the reason to play d6 is, of course, to get in d5. Small pawn move supports larger pawn move. Makes a lot of sense, except for making all this dark squared weakness. All right, so I play bishop c4, and I have one, two, three different things covering d5. So he can't quite play d5 just yet. Still needs another piece. Catch guess which piece normally goes and helps in this situation it's the knight going to e7 or f6 to help black get in d5 well this still doesn't take care of covering the dark squared weakness so this is very common what just happens in the rest of this game All right they played knight c6 once i put my bishop on c4 they weren't worried about b5 messing up their pawns anymore i guess and i played d3 uh, usually play d3, whoops, before I castle in these type of openings. Uh, make the e pawn very strong, open up the bishop, protect the f pawn, and um, yeah, I want to see what black's going to do. I have a feeling it's going to be one of these knight moves, and of course it was, which is a mistake in my opinion. Um, knight g to e7, and again, not addressing these dark squared issues in this type of opening. So, Instead of knight g to e7, what could black play? Well, there's d6, very normal, but now it takes them one and then two moves to get in d5. So that's an extra tempo for white at some point. But this is much more normal. This is much safer for black because they cover his dark squares a little bit. Right now they're covering e5 a lot better. All right, so d6. And if they play d6, I would just play the normal castle. Then they could put the knight there threatening d5. And now I actually have this smooth little move i love i call it secret saucy move um and if you play the grand prix attack you'll start to get used to this little slide to the right by the queen and then use this diagonal which is open to get over to h4 and try to help out with some sort of king side play here for white fantastic but they didn't just let black get in the d5 now because now they have one two three things supporting up on to go forward the truth is, because they have yet to castle, they cannot play d5 yet. So that's another reason why I love the queen going to e1. Here, if they played forward, capture on d5, capture on d5, and you have a pleasant choice of either the knight or the bishop. Let's just go with the knight for fun. And this knight on e7 is pinned. So it's a free pawn, free center pawn. Uh, White's doing pretty good here. All right. So one more time, I think d6... Probably is their safest move, but they have other choices. They could have played knight f6. And this does develop the knight. This tries to get in d5, uh, but this, of course, is not that good either. Uh, this just allows me to go forward with tempo because I'm actually attacking the knight. And I'm going to follow up with my knight going to e4. And I have a nice grip on these dark squares very early in the game. Not pleasant for black. One more time. All right, I played d3. They played knight g to e7, but they could have played d6 instead or they could have played knight of six instead here's another option they could have played knight h6 instead right they could play and go to the side knight h6 kind of like um a little clever but it doesn't help support uh d5 and um the knight actually is kind of uh i don't know it's not going anywhere it's not helping out is it going to support f5 uh is it going to go to g4 later and this bishop on c1 is going to be targeting it, so it kind of has to be protected. And this bishop on g7 has to babysit it. Um, but it does allow black to castle. So if they played knight h6, I would castle. They could castle. And then I would just play the, the very typical, again, in this position, e5, followed by knight going to e4, attacking a pawn here, covering some squares. Yeah, I'm not really scared about them getting f5 even. That's how much I'm not worried about this with this pawn, dark square, kind of like lock. All right, we're almost up to about 10 moves, so let's just uh, go forward a little bit more. All right, so they played knight g to e7, and the last move they could have played is the old typical a6, but now they have just about every single pawn on the, uh, the light uh, square, as you can see, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a lot of pawns on the light squares. And yes, they are trying to get in b5, so I understand that. But I probably just go forward, and I let them, in this case, Hit b5. Normally I try to stop with the a4, but not always. Here I'm very happy to to just 
move my bishop back as needed because my uh, d pawn is covering c4 my bishop will not get trapped like the noah's ark trap which is in many openings especially Rui lopez and some others so this bishop is not going to get trapped by these pawns at least not in this position not yet and by playing e5 now my knight again is going to e4 and i have a fantastic position in the center this bishop is not happy and it could go something like this b5 bishop b3 and here black's got to make a decision right they not trapping the bishop my knight's going to go here i'm going to castle i'm going to do the lockdown attack a hanging pawn so let's say they do something bold like d5 very bold all right so again same thing that happened in the game i can take the pawn on d6 queen will take on d6 knight goes to e4 and notice i said this very early nothing's really protecting the pawn on c5 properly and by allowing this to occur even though I now have my pawn duo no longer there, right? But if I'm winning a pawn in the right position, I'm willing to give the pawn duo because I'm up a solid pawn. So by playing knight e4, they have to run out with the queen. Where is the queen going to go? How many safe squares? All right, let's just pick c7. I take the pawn, and I'm just up a clean pawn. My knight will be able to run back if needed. I can still castle at some point. And I can go forward, forward, do kind of a lockdown here with my pawns and control the square on e5. Kind of just a safe safe position for white up a pawn. So this is not a good play. All right, but let's go back to actual game. And knight g7. Now I'm going to play e5. Normally I castle these type of positions, but when I can target these weaknesses, I am targeting them. All right, e5. They play d6. Notice they should play d6 first, right? We talked about that a moment ago. Let me pull it up. They should play d6 first to cover this. Because now if I play e5, they can go past right they could go past d6 past my e5 pawn and attack my bishop and now they're not doing that bad the knight will you know has places to go but they you now have a beautiful pawn duo themselves so that's how they probably should have proceeded but instead I, e6 bishop c4 knight c6 d3 knight g7 e5 now they play d6 i take that pawn on e6 d6 rather queen takes on d6 knight went to e4 all right Again, where's the queen go? It can't stay in the center protecting that c5 pawn. So they move to c7. I snacked on the pawn, and that was a clean pawn. All right. So this is a one grand prix game. Usually I'm going to do two or three games, but I kind of talked a little long here, so we'll stop. And I'll do another video soon on the grand prix. Uh, again, the first 10 moves are the most important. Um, try to build your snow plow and build up behind it and uh, go forward when you're ready and as you guys know um in my classes with the students at the end of every class i love to do a joke so let's do a quick one i love jokes all right how about this one hmm. why did the chicken cross the playground hmm. well i think all the students know this one you only cross the playground to get to the other slide the other slide <laughs> All right, this is Coach Aaron. Peace.